Welcome. Today we're gonna glaze some bigger pots. These are not huge, but they are as big as they can be in my kiln. This one is about 62 centimeters, something like that, which is about the maximum for my kiln. This one is a little bit lower, but still sort of a big pot. And uh, there are some special challenges when you have to glaze bigger pots. They're easier, they're diff more difficult to apply the glaze and they're difficult to handle. You have to be very careful not to bump into something and scrape off the glaze and they're more difficult to stack in the kill and so on and so on. Today I'm going to continue the work that I've been doing in the past uh, glaze videos with multiple layers of glaze combined with oxides under and over uh, the glaze to create some truly original uh, colors and impressions. But I'm going to go even more crazy this time, <laughs> use more different glazes, more oxides, and hopefully create something really interesting. So I hope you will enjoy and follow me in this journey. When you're glazing a big pot, there's a lot more space wasted in your kiln because there's simply a lot more air around the pots that you can't really fill up. Um, so it's a little more tricky to get as much out of your kiln as possible. So the first thing I like to do before I actually start glazing is to figure out how I can place my pots to at least get the most out of it. As you can see here, the two big pots I have is taking up almost the entire height of the kiln. So I can't really add anything more here. And also I wouldn't be able to put a shelf here. I have a little bit of space left here. So I use that for um, this uh, flower pot here on top. And I have a small kiln shelf here. And underneath that um, I have one of the fermenting cocks. Let me just remove that so you can see. So you see, the fermenting crock is down there. And as you can see, it will be almost impossible to place that after I put the big one without scratching it. So I also have to figure out the order I put things in. So I'll put this fermenting crock, I'll put the lid down here, and then I will add the two bigger ones. And lastly, I will put um, this small piece of kiln shelf and the flower pot. And that's what I have space for in this firing. So it's only four pots. It's a lot of money per pot, but these pots are very big. So that's just how it is. So now that we know how we can stack the kiln with these pots, it's time to do the glazing. As usual, the first thing I will do is clean up the surface. Even though it looks clean and it just came out of the kiln, there could be a little bit of dust on the surface. And if there's any dust, the glaze won't stick. And of course, with a big pot like this, it can be a little more challenging to get all the way around. But if you use a big sponge like this, keep dipping it in, um, in the water, and shake it step by step all the way around, it's not that difficult. And the better you clean it, the better your glaze will stick. Or, you know, you could say if you don't clean it good enough, it's not going to stick. So, now comes the inside. <laughs> That's a little more tricky. I will clean the top and I will clean the, the inside of the rim. And then I will try and see if I can get some of the inside clean. I don't expect every corner of the inside to be clean because I can hardly reach in there and uh, I can't see what I'm doing, but at least I'm gonna make sure there's no dust on the button and get most of the sides cleaned. I think that's good enough. If there's a little bit of inconsistencies in the inside, I mean, nobody's gonna see that. So I hope that's gonna be good. So that's the first one. And uh, 
Same procedure with the second one. I also turn it around because sometimes there was maybe some, some loose uh, parts that fall out or something, and I don't want any of that in my pot. So now they're ready for glazing. The first thing I will do is glaze the inside. It's the most simple part of it. I'm just gonna pour the glaze in, shake it around, and pour it out again. I'm not gonna do any of the crazy coloring and layering and stuff on the inside. The only reason I'm glazing them on the inside is to seal them, basically. Um, so that's the easy part. Next, we'll work on the outside, and that's where all the crazy stuff is going to happen. Both of these pots are going to have a, a base of floating blue. There are lots of different variations of floating blue. Uh, the one I use is a slightly modified version of uh, the floating blue that Old Forge creations have uh, made, where the red iron oxide have been exchanged for manganese. And the reason for that is that if you use the original recipes with red iron oxides, it breaks in sort of like a brown color. And I don't like that so much. When you put the manganese in, instead of the red iron oxide, it sort of breaks in a more purplish kind of color. And I think that matches the blue of the floating blue much better. But any floating blue variation should work. But as I said, we're also going to work with some uh, glazes on top of that. We're going to work with some oxides under and on top. So um, let's get started with the inside. One of the challenges when you have to glaze the inside of a big pot like this is that you can easily leave the glaze in there too long. And then we'll get too much glaze and it may not be so good. This glaze, the floating blue, is easy to work with in that sense because you could almost not put too much. But still, I mean, there's a limit. So I'm trying to just take one big um, a liter in this case, or oh, is it half a liter? Yeah, almost a liter of glaze. Pour it in really quickly and then start turning it around and putting out. I only want it to be like 10 seconds or something, not too long. And of course, as always, make sure that your uh, glaze is well um, mixed. So there's no lumps in anything. So um, let's try and see how that goes. And then leave it here for a few seconds because there's a lot of a um, lot of wall size in there and you want you need to give it time to um, to drip off <laughs> yeah and then check the inside it looks good to me it looks like well there's actually some of it that didn't get glazed it is difficult so i'll have to Take in another, uh, another round and just try and, and, and hit that side of it. And not put it out on level all. Oh, some of it went to the floor. <laughs> That's just part of the game. And again with this glaze, even though now some of it has double layer, it's probably going to be okay. So now, I'm going to look inside. All of it has been glazed and it doesn't look too thick, so that's fine. And then I'm just going to clean the floor. <laughs> because I'm doing the next part right away, but I don't want any of the glaze to, um, to get on the bottom of that one. So cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. So same procedure. <laughs> if 
if I sound a little bit out of breath, it is because I'm out of breath. <laughs> it does take some strength to jog around big parts like this. This looks good. And I actually made all of it glazed in one go. That's good. Now it's time to do the outside of the pots. And with big pots like this, it is by far the easiest way to glaze them using spray glazing. You could theoretically pour over it, but I think it's very messy and, and yeah, just difficult to catch all that glaze. And it's difficult to get an even a distribution of glaze, especially on the little on the big fat one, because it's going in on both tops and bottom. And to pour that just never succeeded with me. And I hate to brush glazing uh, a really big pot like that. So I'm going to do spray glazing. And this is also where I'm going to be creative with the colors and the layers of the glazes and the oxides and all that. I don't know, for whatever reason, <laughs> when I go creative, I also go messy. So we're gonna go outside and do all that. Before I spray the glaze on the outside, I wanna add some uh, oxides, oxide washes. I have a video coming up about how I mix the washes, but basically it's a colorant, an oxide in my case, or carbonate, lots of water. And then I add a little bit of EPK to help suspend the colors in the water. And I add a little bit of flux in my case, Gersley Barat. I'll get back to you on that. But I'm just gonna paint some patterns. I'm not a very good painter, so it's more gonna be some abstract patterns under the glaze. I'm gonna start with the uh, copper carbonate wash. The copper carbonate is really good. It, uh, it does something great to, um, to this uh, particular uh, glaze. Of course, you have to learn which oxides react well with whatever glaze you're using. In my experience, this one is really good. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of this. Copper, um, the cobalt, <laughs> copper, sorry. The copper oxide is not so dangerous to use um, in the sense that it doesn't make my glaze run uh, too much. So I can, I can even add it down here uh, at the foot area. So I think this is good enough. The next one is a chrome oxide. I haven't actually used this particular one before. It's a different kind of green, um, but also in the green range. So I'm gonna use this uh, a little less, um, but still, I hope it will do something good to my pot. And then maybe you will say, why don't you test this on test tiles first? It's because I hate test tiles. I just like to jump into it uh, because you do test tiles and they look one way and you put it on your pot, it looks a different way. I'm just going to do it on my pot. And last but not least, I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt. But cobalt makes the glaze runny. So I'm just going to add some of that to the top and not too much down the sides. Oops. It's running. So, I think this looks good. I don't know if it looks good, but I think it will look good <laughs> when it's done. Next step is to spray the floating blue first layer. It's going to be quite a thick layer, so it's going to take a little bit of time. And I don't always do this, but today I'm gonna wear proper protection. Sometimes you guys are bitching me about not using it, and so I will today. So I won't be talking much now because you won't be able to hear me in a second. That's it.
it's always sort of difficult to judge how thick the glaze gets when you are a spray glazing. In my um, experience with this glaze, it takes at least two or three layers to get that. I want a pretty thick uh, application. So the first layer is easy enough because you can see where it's cut, but the next layers are going to be a little more difficult because it can be difficult to see what part you sprayed. So you have to kind of measure the rounds and, and be a little more precise with that. It dries really quickly, even now that it's cold. So I can go ahead and uh, spray the next layer. Of course, always check how much glaze you have left. You use a lot of glaze for a big pot like this. to give it one last layer, so three layers in total. With this glaze, I kind of never had too much glaze on it, but I had examples where I put too little and then it doesn't get that intense blue color that I want. I'm not gonna stop here. <laughs> so next up is my favorite white glaze, a Heath A2 white. It's good on top of this floating blue because it melts really well into it and creates these long uh, ocean-like um, color variations that I really love. Um, I said it before, but for some strange reason, this one works really well on top of floating blue. If you put it under the floating blue, it kind of separates and it, it doesn't flow into each other. I still haven't found out why, but I know that's how it works, and that's good enough for me. So this, I'm gonna put some here in the top, because that's gonna help uh, uh, create these, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, ocean-like uh, floating things, and I'm just gonna splash some of it on as well. And I don't mind that some of it is running down a little bit. Actually, I'm deliberately trying to make it run like this because I know it looks good. So something like that. And then, not only because I know it looks good, but also because it's really funny, I'll just turn it around a little bit like this, and then I will throw some of it like this. <laughs> That's a lot of fun, and it's very messy. That's why I do it outside. <laughs> so I think that's enough. So, of course, we're not going to stop here. Going to move on to the oxide and put some of it on top. And this is one thing that a lot of you have made comments about because most of you applied uh, oxides under glaze to highlight textures. But very few are using oxides on the top, but you can do that as well. And it sort of blends into the glaze. And uh, many of these oxides are also part of the glaze, so it looks really good. So first, I'm going to use some of my copper carbonate wash. And then some of the chrome uh, that I haven't 
this before, but I'm going to try anyway. Let's see how it goes. I mean, what can go wrong? <laughs> Something like that. And then some of the cobalt. And again, I'm only going to apply that to the upper part of the pot because it does make the pot more runny or, or the glaze <laughs> more runny. So I'm a little more careful with that. I'm also going to use a little bit of another one of my favorites, red iron oxide wash. It's a very strong colorant and, um, and it does create these wonderful dark brownish uh, patterns. I'm going to use this um, sand brush. I'm just going to paint some things like this very light because it, it can tend to be very dominant, but uh, I sort of like how um, it adds some depth um, to the pot. Something like that. The last oxide I'm going to add is a zinc oxide. This is a little more unusual, but I found some really interesting uh, so white spots, uh, light spots that it creates. But I'm not going to use too much because it is, uh, it, can, it can be too much in a way. So I'm just going to splash some of these. So, I think that's going to be enough, but I'm not going to stop here, <laughs> because I'm going to add a third layer of glaze. But first, I'm going to do the other big one, sort of the same way as I did this, because I need to um, spray the third uh, glaze layer, and uh, I don't want to be cleaning up the spray gun too much. So, next part. I'm basically going to do much of the same, except I'll try and see if I can do something to highlight these grooves even more on, on this part. They will also be highlighted by, um, by the glaze because it, they change color a lot uh, when it breaks over uh, edges. And again, this is something that is very different from, uh, from one glaze to another. Some glazes do that a lot and uh, some glazes do it much less. Um, but the floating blue reacts really well to, um, to textures. Also going to use some of the chrome uh, oxide on this one. I want to highlight that uh, spiral um, feel to it. So even though, as I said, I'm not a very good painter, I still like to work in um, in shapes and, and directions and uh, I think this is going to be good for this one. Yeah. I'm not going to add any uh, cobalt under this one um, because I think it's going to work better with this. So now it's time to do another uh, spraying of this with floating blue, three layers, that's it.
Working with floating blue is sort of like cooking with butter. And yeah, I am a foodie too. I like cooking. And so sometimes when I do mashed potatoes, I'm like, did I put enough butter in? Or should I put a little bit more butter? And I always end up putting more butter in. Because honestly, I never, like, I never ever had someone eat my mashed potatoes and say it was great mashed potatoes, but there was a little bit too much butter. I never heard that, you know. So same thing with floating glue. It's better to add too much than too little. But again, this is just that glaze. Other glazes may look better when they're applied much thinner. So now I'm going to move on with the oxides. And again for this I'm trying to highlight that um, spiral uh, feel to it. Um, so I'm trying at least. So that was the oxides. Now I'm ready to do the final, actually it's not the final, <laughs> but the third layer of glaze. The next layer of glaze is, is going to be my typical gold, which is a very dark uh, glaze. can also turn into these golden sort of uh, variations. But I'm only going to put it on the top because I want to sort of frame the pot with a darker top. Um, and uh, I'm going to spray that, but in order to get mostly of there, it doesn't matter if it comes down a little bit because I want to float it into it, I'll use this uh, shield and see how that works. That's going to work really well. So I'll do the same thing on the other big pot. And for this one, I'm also going to try and add just a little bit at the bottom. It's going to be the opposite way. I think that's going to be good, but of course, I'm not going to stop here. <laughs> I promise you I would go a little bit crazy on these ones. So I will put a fourth layer of glaze on it. Not all over it, but I will do some sprinkles with it. And that's going to be my S glaze. Remember some videos ago in the summer I was doing uh, S glaze based on the ashes I get from my pit fire. If you haven't seen this video, there's a link somewhere here, and you can see how I mix that glaze. It is a wonderful glaze to put on top of other glazes. It, it kind of alters the glaze a little bit. I'm not going to spray a whole lot of this, uh, because it's just going to give it uh, some splashes, um, sort of like the way that I use the oxides. Uh, so just a little bit, it will help it create a variation of the color, and uh, 
Hopefully make it look a bit more like organic wood pile, some sort of bone. So that's it. Now I'm done with all the glazing. So uh, four layers of glaze. First the floating glue, actually first some oxides and then the floating glue. Then the heat A2 white, the white splashes we put there. And then the timber go on the rim. And finally the ash glaze and of course the oxides on top of it. So it's a lot of different, uh, <laughs> lot of different chemicals on this pot. Uh, I'm ready to fire it. Now, all the pots have been stacked, including the two, um, the, the, the flower pot and the fermented crock. I didn't show you how to glaze that because I think you've seen that before. It's all stacked. One thing I didn't show you is before I put them in the kiln, of course, I made sure that the bottom was completely clean and that there was sort of like a few millimeters, even though these glazes are not running too much. I just want to make sure they don't not don't stick to the shelf. But I guess you've seen that before. I just wanted to emphasize that. So now we're ready to fire. And in a couple of days, it will be ready. And of course, I will show you the results. Good morning. Now it's time to open the kiln. And I know I said this a million times before, but I will say it again. Please don't open your kiln too early, because if it's too warm when you open it, you're putting unnecessary stress on your heating elements, and they will die out sooner than they have to. And they're very expensive to replace, so take your time. Another good reason is that if it's too warm, you won't be able to handle the pots anyway. So um, just as well wait until it's cool enough to handle. And also, if it's a glaze fire, as it is in this case, Opening it too early may um, alter the glaze in a way that you're not expecting. There could be some crackle, some, yeah, wait. I usually wait until 150 degrees and then I open it just a little bit. Just put a little bit of a, a, a kiln shelf or something in there. And then when it's below 100 degrees, maybe 50 degrees, I open it. Now it's been sitting overnight because it was actually almost cool enough last night, but it was dark and yeah, night. So I just waited till this morning and now it's under 20 degrees, so it's very easy to handle. But now it's time to open, so let's go and see how it turned out. Ah, this looks very promising. I mean, I don't know if I was expecting exactly this, but the coloration on the side and the darkness up here on the on the, the, the rim looks really really good so now i will take them out and uh, we can talk a little bit about the details of how it turned out now i'm back in the house and uh, i sort of failed again <laughs> as i said before when you do a lot of experiments you fail a lot and i do I always try new stuff, and uh, sometimes it turns out amazing, sometimes not. Sometimes it's a complete fail. But the good thing about failing is that you also learn how to correct your failures. We talked about it in a previous video, about reglazing um, and also reclaiming clay um, at an earlier stage. So, back to the pots. These two are the big pots. Uh, there was also a couple of other pots, but I'm not going to go into details about that because the primary focus of this video was uh, these two bastards. <laughs> Let's first look at this one. My daughter loves it. She thinks it's very beautiful. And I can see some beauty in it. It was not exactly what I expected. And you can see it even more on this. Remember we talked about um, that you need floating glue to be applied very thick. If you don't, it becomes more brownish, uh, purplish, uh, and not this strong blue that the 
building who is known for. And that's the case with this one. So even though <laughs> I claimed when I was spraying it that I put a lot of glaze on it, apparently it was not. Or maybe it's because it was so cold out there that it somehow influenced the way that uh, spraying glaze on it uh, worked. It could have been, I'm not sure, because I never spray glazed outside um, being that cold, um, except for this and, and the previous time I did it. And both times it turned out a little bit too little. Or maybe it's just because I was so freezing cold out there that I didn't give it enough time to apply a proper layer. Having said that, um, especially on this one, all the oxides and, and, and the white uh, glaze on top, and especially I think the, the chemical gold on top, actually turned out really nice. And I don't know for sure if I like it or not. And that's really an important point here, because when you take things out of the kiln, there are really two or three scenarios. You know, One is, you just love it. It's perfect. It's exactly what you wanted. And the other one, extreme, is that it completely failed. It cracked or glaze ran off or whatever. And then you have this in between, which is the case with these two. Because I don't hate it. It's just not what I was expecting. I was expecting more strong blue and, uh, and the oxides to play a lot more with that. And on this one... It's, it's, uh, you can see it if you, if you look closely, and it, and it does have a nice uh, metallic shine to it. On this one, of course, you can see it a lot more. Um, there's some craving. Uh, there's some areas where the glaze kind of extracted a little bit. Um, the areas where I applied the, 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 the chrome oxide is kind of a little bit rough. And I mean, if this was um, functional wear, if it was a plate or a bowl or something, you would say, that's a failure, because you can't, it's, it's probably not food safe. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's not supposed to contain food anyway. Um, and for a big part like this, I actually do like this sort of craving, and, and because it does create some texture in the glaze. And, and well, the thing is, when you take out pots like this, that you're not sure about if you like or not then my advice is put it in your living room, put it somewhere where you will see it often, uh, and then look on it for a few days. Maybe have some of your friends come over and see what they think, because sometimes you're wrong the first time you look at it. And I may be wrong. Maybe in a few days I will love this. Right now, I don't know. I do consider it a failure, <laughs> because it didn't turn out the way I wanted, but then again, I don't know, what do you think? You can put a comment down there um, if you like it. One thing I noticed about this um, in particular, because that's where all the coloring are, are most uh, vivid, is the, the green uh, chrome oxide that... Um, let me see if I can find a good area here. Yeah, maybe here. I don't know how easily it is to see on the video. But I think maybe I need to dissolve it a little more. It looks like it's a little too thick layer. It's funny, when you touch it, it's a little more rough. It didn't melt out as much as the other. But I kind of like it. It's a darker green. I just need to understand how to, how to use that better. I don't know. All in all, maybe this is actually beautiful. This one I'm a little more doubt about. So what do you do? If in a few days it turns out that I hate it <laughs> and I want to do something to change it, I can reglaze it. However... If you saw in my reglazing video, I think I can put a link somewhere here, um, I would normally just dip it and let it dry and maybe dip it again. This one, of course, <laughs> I won't be able to dip. I would need several hundred liters of glaze, and I don't, I don't have that. I spray glaze this, but I actually never spray glazed reglazing. And I'm afraid spray glazing would just, because it's a, it's a very shiny uh, surface, if I spray glaze it, I think it's just going to peel off <laughs> so that's probably not an option. So the only option left is to uh, brush it on. And in order to brush on um, a glaze, uh, it needs to be a little thicker, needs to have some component that makes it stick a little better. Uh, usually you would add some CMC, some gum material. There are also other materials. You can ask your lo local uh, pottery store. They, they usually have something you can mix in the, in the glaze to make it stick a little better when you, when you um, brush it and also make it a little more thick. I may try that. I may not, because maybe, as I said, I end up loving it. So, um, 
That was the result. And again, I'm not too proud to admit when I fail. As part of the family, and you should never be afraid of that. Go crazy, fail, learn, move on. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, next Sunday, there's going to be another video. As you probably know by now, I have a long, detailed video out every Sunday. And maybe in between, there's some shorter ones. So if you like this video, please subscribe, uh, write a comment, share, uh, maybe a like. I will try and reply to as many as you as possible, as fast as possible. <laughs> and I hope to see you soon again. Have a great day.